Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. In Israel, in the days of Jesus, under the law, now the woman with the issue of blood was having a menstrual cycle continuously. It didn't end. And when a woman is having a menstrual cycle, she's declared unclean. She is required to stay at home for anything she touches is unclean until the cycle is over. Then she will have a bath and be purified by some rituals. Then she can interact with people. Under any standard, you don't interact with people in Israel in those days when you are having your period. So she was bleeding continuously, having a period. And if she must go out, the rule is there must be somebody with a bell in front ringing the bell saying, unclean, it's like coronavirus. <laughs> unclean, you know. And they are ringing the bell, unclean. Once they ring the bell, everybody moves out because she must not touch you. You are defiled. And that's when Jesus said, who touched me? She was afraid to speak because she's not supposed to touch it. She defied all protocol. Jesus said, this is faith. These are the people that will make it on earth. People who will breach all protocol. Say, you can't stop me. You can't stop me. Look at her at the wedding feast of Cana of Galilee. I now know why God chose Mary. He said, son, they have run out of wine. He said, my hour to do miracles has not come. The next thing, I thought she would argue with him. But where will he come? No, she just told him, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Get on the balls. Get ready. He will give you an instruction now. And then she stepped back. And he was, in, he was held on the spot. He must give this. He said, sir, mommy said you give instruction. These are the balls. The governor is waiting. You now say, uh, there's no, you say what? Say, fill them with water. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coma, kata. I, 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 I said, Jacob said, I have wrestled with God and I've prevailed. And my life is preserved. Those are men. Those are men. May God give us men. Yeah. Men, men, men. Strong men. Men who will say it is possible. Men who are down and out. They look to their right, to their left. There's no hope. Men like Job who will say, after the loss of 10 children, all his business is down. Nothing is working. Everything is over. And it's even mostly his fault. Still. He said, I have hope. I will rise again. Jesus. Where, what did God put in them? What did they hear to say such in this life? What? What did they hear? And someone is committing suicide because his girlfriend left him. Oh, they will deny him entry into heaven. You don't deserve even to knock at the gates. They will plunge him into hellfire. So you are worthy of the blood of our Lord Jesus. You kill yourself because a girlfriend left you. Come on, please, Jesus. You need tenacity to make it. You need to be tenacious. Hmm. The character trait you must have. I asked myself when they brought the first message to Job that the fire from heaven hit the roof and all the chickens are dead. Then they said, the fire from heaven hit all the goats and rams are dead. Then the cows are dead. Wow. Jesus. Then they said, all the ten children are dead. The Bible says he rent his clothes. Poured ashes on his head. When someone rents his clothes and puts out, what do you think is going to come out next? It will cost humanity. Then the next is say, the Lord giveth. Ah. The Lord taketh. What should be the next? It will not be well with the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What? What genes is running in them? And I understand why there is a report with God of men. Hebrews 11, men who had a good report with God. Go and check their lives. There's nothing extraordinary. It's just these things you find. That's all. There's nothing else. They didn't have two heads. They didn't have two horns. They didn't have six hands. They didn't have six fingers. And I understand why Elijah, after bringing fire from heaven, 
conquering the prophets of Baal. They told him, Jezebel seeks your life. And he said, God, I'm tired. God said, you are replaced immediately. Look at the God you are dealing with. Elijah said, I'm tired. So you are replaced. Elisha is to replace you immediately. Not next year, now. I'm done with you. Come home. For saying he's tired. There is no room to despair. There is no room to cast off strength. There is no room to give up. Amen? Amen. You must be tenacious. You must have audacity. And you must never, ever give up. Number two. You must be bold. Audacious. Audacious. The Bible says in Proverbs 26, 1, 28, 1, the righteous as bold as a lion. You know, in Acts 4, 13, the Bible says when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived and recognized that they had been with Jesus. So one trademark in Jesus' life was audacity, boldness, boldness. You know, I found out for every marriage, you know, that's why the Bible says there are two laws, three laws in marriage. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Number two, wife, submit your husband as unto the Lord. Number three, husband, dwell with your wife with knowledge. I wonder why they say wife, dwell with, they say wife, dwell with your husband with knowledge. I think most men are generally alike. Ego. Egocentric. While the women change. I've seen women. He said, the husband got a posting. I said, should I pray for your husband? He said, no. Let him stay there. Just be sending money. Let him stay there with his trouble. Then I've seen another one with the husband get posted. He said, pray to return. It's not money I'm looking for. I need him here. Can you see two different places? You can see why God said, dwell with knowledge. Eh? One said, leave him there. His wife is too much. Let him be sending the money. The other one said, we don't need money. We need him here. We and the children, we want him. I want someone I can sit and relate with. Money is not everything. The other one said, Pastor, don't pray. He should return. No. Let him stay there. In fact, all the postage, just send him money. Then they say, dwell with your wives with knowledge, meaning each woman's request and need differs from the other. And that's how God's demand to differs. Do you know that somebody who is in a strait, who has suffered losses, who is crying, do you know that if you go to a great man here and you enter his presence and you're crying, what will he do? He will show you compassion, right? God said, if you enter crying, he will send you back. Enter boldly. That's his own demand. Audacious. Otherwise, you'll get nothing from him. Evil. You know, when they took David's family, the Bible says he wept till he wept no more. God should show compassion and talk. God didn't speak. So when you're done crying, you call on me. That is how, that's my demand. You see, each woman's demand differs. And each human being is different. That's why you can greet a lady. Oh, good morning, madam. You're looking great today. So I wasn't great before. Then you greet another, you're looking great today. Say, thank you. Then you tell another, you are looking great today. I'm always great every time. You can see different reactions based on their makeup. So you have to study each to know what to say. One, you say, you're looking great today. The other one, you say, oh, you're looking great as always. The another one, you say, <laughs> otherwise you enter into trouble. Now it's natural. It's if, in fact, you get more from us natural men when you come in crying. And you're crying, what's the problem? What is it? The children, what happened? Tell me, okay, first dry your eyes. Sorry, take, let us sit down. Is that not what you do? Because if you enter crying, they will deny you entry. Then how did he say you should enter? No, he's saying enter boldly to obtain mercy at their of need. You are in crisis. You are in crisis that is making you cry. He said, but before you enter, dry your tears then walk with audacity and walk towards God like this. I have come. Jesus. See, that's what he wants to see. Say otherwise. Say they will not give you anything. So it's the audacious. 
that make it, not the timid. That's why you need to be bold. I found out that every revelation God gives to you, your duty is to turn it into flesh. He says, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word, and the word became flesh. The word we handled, the word we saw, we experienced, has become flesh. You must turn it to flesh, meaning it must turn to reality for word. There is no procedure. That word will become reality. That you must take risk and be audacious. They told Rebecca, is it Rebecca? That's the mother of Isaac and Jacob. He said, two nations are in your womb. The elder will serve the younger. When the day came for that revelation to become flesh, the mother told Jacob, now Esau has gone. You take this kid, wear it, and go to your father. He said, ah, what you ask? He said, if you can't do it, you can't make it in life. You know, hey, hey, what you ask? It's a risk. It's a risk. And you must be bold. Otherwise, it will die as revelation. It will never become flesh in your life. Never. And if that happens, God will cast you out of his sight. David! Time to face Goliath. It's a two-way thing. Goliath's head can come down, your head can come down. But you must face Goliath. You don't have a choice. That's how life is designed. Those who don't make it are those who run from Goliath. They're afraid. You must be bold. You must be audacious. You must be willing to take that step out of that boat. Say, come! And I know what the other disciples will be telling Peter. Hey, 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 Peter! Hey, uh, we are not close to Banco. This is the middle of this year. Can you see that boundary? They say this place is a minimum of 5,000 feet. Hey, hey, Peter! Say, I must go. It's the Lord. He said, come. I must take the risk. What if, what is red white? Anybody can wear white, though? Hey, are these people that do magic, they can walk on water. What is the Lord? We take the risk. And he steps out on the water. And it's on record. Only two human beings walked on water. Jesus and Peter. Audacity. Whoever does not have it, just do simple prayer and let them go. It is well, my brother. The Lord be with you. And do those realities prayer. Lord be gracious unto you. Lord be with you. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, and the Spirit of our Lord come upon you now and forevermore. Amen. Then you do cross like this. Then you do your own cross. It is well with you. You can go. Praise God. You know, it's heading nowhere. Nowhere. It's a joker. <laughs> do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. Of men who took such risk of their boldness. And that's why we're reading about them today. And the ones that didn't take the bold step, we are not reading them today. Then the garbage of history. The dustbin of history, that's where they are. We have Jacob Esau. We have David Goliath. We have Esther and the king. He should have said, I'm not sent for. It's the language of the defeated. They, must, they have not sent for me. <laughs> Say fast and pray after three days. After three days, nothing changed. Let's go. That's when she said, if I perish, and she did perish, and saved the whole nation, and put her name 
in the archives of gold. You must be bold in life. You must have audacity in life. You cannot afford to be timid. Of course, you don't take miscalculated risks. You take what we call calculated risks. Another quality, and I'll leave it here, that you need to have, you'll make it with God. You know, I, I have many times looked at that aspect. They enter his presence with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. For somebody distressed. So what you need to do now, you first compose yourself, stop the crying, Wipe the tears. Use light makeup. And the solution is only with God. Now you dry everything. You dress well. Have your way. <laughs> Have your way. You dancing. Did he say dancing if all is well? He said no, it's a precondition. When you not get to the court, you see, if you want to enter the holy place from that court, now be more bold. Don't cut walk uh, Lion walk. Did you hear me? You, are, you see how many lions walk? <laughs> he said lion walk, not cat walk. Cat walk is still timidity. You know, it's one step. Say lion walk like. <laughs> God says trouble has arrived. Do call all the angels. Let's solve this case so that we can have time to do the other work we need to do. And it's thrilled. They come boldly to obtain mercy at the hour of need. The word patience means fortitude, long suffering, enduring, temper. I'll put it in this way a constant mood that does not reflect what you are going through, but your relationship with God. That means a patient person is not moody, a patient person is not depressed. Everything has collapsed, yet. You can't read it from their face that all is not well. Those are the people that make it with God. See, God forbid, I'm Robert just told the car, they walk in, say, praise God, how are you all doing? Oh, you're looking great. How? Oh, how are you? Oh, I saw you that, the Lord, and the Lord made start to me that time. All I saw is, leave me, I'm not greeting anybody. That one can't go far with God. You see a woman that the husband abused her and she comes out to the office and he's smiling. What's the problem? Why are you looking down? And he's giving word of her and you don't know she had just been abused. God said, that's my man. That's my man. That's whom we we'll work together with. That's, who, that's my partner to solve issues. Together we'll make it. That's the language of God. You can't tell. There's no mood on their face. It's ever joy. It's counted all joy. When they file themselves in diverse trials, they are counting it as joy. They are smiling. You can't tell. You need to design. There's something wrong. I can pick there's something wrong. What is it? And they are still smiling. Everyone says, this was all. No, I can pick it. The Holy Spirit is telling me something is wrong. When there's no money, when you see them, they look like they have money. You have to be designing to know there's no money. And the Holy Spirit tells you, bless that person. Say, this one, yes, bless it. And don't have any drop money just like this. It is well. Ah, well, it is well. Oh. Jesus is still on the throne, Sha. Now, nah, who says no more on the throne? What's the problem? Ah. That one can't go far. That doesn't mean Jesus said, My heart, my sorrow, my spirit, my soul is sorrowful unto death. That doesn't mean you don't get sorrowful. That doesn't mean you don't get sad but it doesn't reflect on your character. And because your wife didn't greet you well, and all is not well, where you go? Say, yes, what's the brother? What is it? Are you quarreling? Yes, we're quarreling. What did I do? Nothing. What is it? Okay, you can go. Leave me alone. And then what do you do? They say, did you run, pastor? Say, no. Who left this? It must be Stanika. <laughs> 
All is not well from where you're coming up. How are you, sir? What's the problem? It's not well. Sit down. And you're listening. Kai! God said, that's my man. That is my man. That is, it's called patience. The ability to hold and not change under pressure. Don't want to say, remember the patience of Job. Meaning, the wife changed. Which God are you worshiping? That kid, all your, they believe God killed the children. Cause God and they said, no, I won't. I've always praised him and I will still praise him. Nothing will change it. That prayer I make in the morning, I give him praise, is never going to change, even if everything goes. But I say, has everything not gone? Yes, including if you go. <laughs> they remember the patience of Job. They didn't curse God. They didn't curse anybody. I was in a hospital and it was about 2 a.m. or so when I see somebody. 2 a.m. I was actually at Luth. And I guess it was me and Bravo were there. And a lady came up from the pediatric ward. And this is what she was saying. Oh, God! I thought you were God. I didn't know you have changed. I used to think you are one Lord. I thought you were the most powerful. We're here. So you've lost all your powers. I'm disappointed in you. So you are no more God. You are now ordinary like the other gods. I walked up to her. I said, what is the problem? Do you know that God could have provided a solution through me there? I said, what is the problem? She didn't answer me. Why, oh God, you allow this to happen? I'm just, I started cursing and cursing God. And you think God will be angry? He won't be angry at all. You know what? God, He knows those to be angry with. He knows those who will bring Cain on. That one, she's just distressed. She doesn't know her right from her left. I was cursing and cursing and cursing. That's lack of patience. Job said, We receive good from God. It's okay, let bad happen. When good came, we didn't curse him, did we? Say so when bad comes, what we did when good comes came is what we will do when bad came, comes. We will still praise him. The wife said, You still uphold your integrity. She couldn't understand. That's what we call patience, ability to hold and not change or buckle under the most intense pressure. A patient man, when the business is bad outside and he enters the house, and the wife's house work today, which work? That's a non-patient man. A patient man, when he enters, how's work today? It will be better tomorrow. Oh, what happened? Whatever we didn't get today, we'll get tomorrow. Our God is still alive and he's still alive. She already knows things are not well. She already knows things are not well. Say, so prepare your best man. I'm actually not hungry. I'm not hungry. Now, what I'm saying, you're still human. He may still not eat. And that doesn't mean, hey, I'll eat, I'm patient. I'll... No, nothing is working. So he may lose appetite and not eat. But, you know, in greeting the wife, I, this, I, let me explain this way. He may still come. Maybe any time he comes in and he greets his wife, he just touches her cheeks like this. You know, when all is all well, you know nobody's touching anybody's cheeks. He still touches the cheeks. How are you, my dear? How is everything today? Uh, were you able to sell it? No, we'll, see, we'll still sell it. Meaning he didn't sell it. We'll get another buyer. In fact, we'll get somebody better. He still touched the cheeks. And if he greets her with a peg, he still greets with a peg. He may not eat because in true sense he has lost appetite. But the whole family will not collapse because he didn't sell. You get what I'm saying? Those are the people that God says they are, will make it in these last days. Praise God. You see men quarreling with their wife. When their mother-in-law comes, ah, my son, good morning, good morning, mommy. Ah, is the one they're quarreling with you. They take it out on the mother-in-law. They take it on her friends. When her friends comes, oh, brother, okay, how are you? I'm fine. Ah, then they ask the wife, what's wrong? This is not how he greets us. So. They didn't offend him. It's the wife that is quarreling with him. That's not a patient man. That can go far with God. I believe you have been blessed by that message and I know your faith has been built up 
And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.